Hey friends, I'm Scott. Let's take a developer's look at Windows 11, specifically WSL and the Windows Terminal, along with WSLG, the ability to go and run graphical apps built in on Windows 11. I'm just going to flip my camera around so that when I point, I'll be pointing up here at the, uh, the screen. I'm in Windows Terminal. Windows Terminal comes with Windows 11, and when you run it, it will automatically detect most of your prompts, like Windows PowerShell and the original DOS command prompt. Here I have PowerShell Core, now called PowerShell 7. It also detected a bunch of the Linuxes that I have installed. I'll talk to you about how I did that as well. You can also put on custom Linuxes like Sigwin or Gitbash by just editing those settings. This is all done very easily. You can just go and say Settings. You can have these different profiles over here, or you can edit the JSON file directly. So you have a lot of control over uh, your terminal. Uh, right now, I've got it a little bit see-through, a little bit transparent here. I can make it more transparent, more glassy, or less transparent. I'm holding down Control-Shift, and I'm scrolling. And then I've also added this PowerShell logo over here. You might ask yourself why. That's because when I go into other prompts, I want to have a graphic there so I can tell the difference. And then sometimes I like to go and say, open this Chevron. I'm going to hold down Alt with my thumb and then click. And then I've got split screens. Then I've got my logo here and then my logo over there. Then I can hit uh, Control W to um, close that tab. All of these things being set in the settings. I can do it either gra um, graphically in the settings UI or I can go and bind things myself. So you can see here I've bound close pane to control W, things like that. So you have a lot of control. If you don't like the UI, well, you can get rid of the UI. You can actually just go like this. I just hit alt enter and now I'm in a full screen terminal. And again, I can hit control shift scroll and make that all go away. So a lot of control here, again, built in and include it. Now, if you want to, you can type WSL dash dash install. I'll do another video about my prompt later. You'll notice that I've got a lot of customizations. I've also updated my prompt with oh my posh to include the current directory, the current git, a branch, whether or not I've got one or uh, added file or one modified file, as well as the current version of .NET that I'm running in the Visual Studio, Visual Studio icon, and then a human heart that tells me the current error level because if I type something silly, I want the heart to turn red. That's not the point of this video. What we're going to do instead is I'm going to type WSL dash dash install. I've also got a bit of a history picker here as well. That's nice. We'll do a whole prompt video at some point. Type in WSL dash dash install. And if you don't have the Windows subsystem for Linux installed, it will go and pop up and say, cool, I will get you a Linux. It will go and install Ubuntu. It'll set all the settings, reboot your machine, and you'll come back into the Windows terminal and you will have a Linux Ubuntu instance automatically set up. You'll notice that I did that and I already got these installed. Now if I want I could say WSL dash dash install and we'll say Debian. Okay. Now it's going to go and actually get that for me. It's downloading Debian right now, installing it, and it's easy to install because it's just a tar file. And look, setting it up. We put in a uh, Unix username and a password. Hope I typed it right twice. I don't feel like I did. Yeah, I'm going to try again. Darn it. What is my password? Typing it too fast. Sweet. Okay, cool. There's Debian. Now, when I close my terminal and then run it again, pull this down auto-detected our new Linux. Now I can have multiple Linuxes installed. So I can type WSL dash dash list dash V for verbose. And you can see that I have my default one that is Ubuntu. I'm on 1804, but I've also got 2004 installed. And then the Debian that we just installed moments ago. So I can have N number of these where N is any number. I can click here and I can open up Ubuntu and I've got my nice logo here. And I've also set up a color um, a color scheme that I like called Ubuntu Legit uh, that I've got a gist up on my GitHub if you want. And then I can also go and again, holding down Alt and clicking on Ubuntu, I can have split screen. I can run HTOP to prove it. Now I'm going to come back over to the left. I'm going to hit Control W. Here's HTOP. I'll hit Q to quit. And you'll notice that I've also modified my prompt here in Ubuntu to look the same. 
but I can prove to you that it is really Ubuntu by saying LSB release dash A, and you can see this is in fact a real version of Ubuntu, and it's running right now on my Windows machine. It is using a tiny, tiny uh, utility virtual machine, but you'll notice that these Linuxes start very, very fast. Oops, that's a cloud shell. Start very fast. Let's go and just start a bunch. There we go. So I've just started five Linuxes. Sorry, They're all different. Something went wrong. Thank you, Alexa. Go away. Don't want to talk to you right now. Close it, close it, close it, close it. Boom, there you go. Isn't that cool? Now, here's where things get interesting. Let's go and grab some Linux application. Let's look at this list of awesome Linux applications. We've got game opportunities open source gaming platform. We've got different clients. Let's try a Git client. Git I, what's this? Now when Windows people typically go and find something uh, that's for Linux, they go and they search the web, they find a Linux thing, they go, oh shoot, this only works on Linux. That's a, that's, that's a bummer. Uh, I can't use that on Windows. Well, you can, you can now. All right, let's figure out how to get this thing. So it looks like Giggle is a thing. How do I get it? We'll go and Google for Giggle. Giggle install Ubuntu. There we go. Let's try that. I'm just going to paste that in directly. And you'll notice that Linux goes and set it up. Now, I'm going to hit the start menu here. And I want to point this out. Look what happened right here. Let's just pause for a second and drink this in. Windows 11, notice that we installed this Linux GUI app and added a link to it for us here in the start menu. So now I can go and run this app. And here it is. Look at this. Now notice, notice the window is not a Windows looking window, is it? That is painted by Linux. What we've done here is we've done all the work in Linux. It's a real Linux environment. We're handling all of that work automatically. And then we're remote desktoping into a seamless version of this. Seamless version of this. You can actually see how the corners are nice. And we can go and open up you know, an existing repository on the file system. Let's go ahead and go into Home, Scott. Let's grab my, you know, my website and we'll say OK. Look at this. I am on Windows 11 and I'm looking at the Git repository for my own website in a tool written for Linux. And it just works. That's actually C sharp right there. Let's try another. Let's try another one. Let's try something else. What else do we got to choose from here? Ah, the GIMP. Let's do that. Let's go and actually kick click on all apps and then we'll click on Ubuntu. And then we'll see here that we've, oops, I actually clicked on Ubuntu rather than the group. I picked on Ubuntu itself. I'm actually going to go and say you, and I'm going to open this one up. That's what I wanted to do for you. And we see here we've got Emacs, Media Player. Let's click on the GNU Image Manipulation Program or the GIMP. Look at that. So here we've got the terminal. Here we've got the GIMP. I want to point out how fast that started. And I can go and open an image. Works just fine. And that's slick. Now, I'm in a Linux Windows, a Linux application on Windows. You notice that it's wicked fast. But I can also click on File System and go to MNT and click on the mount point. And we actually have mount points here to our Windows file system. So we can go back and forth. So my Linux applications can access my Windows file system and back and forth. And here we've got Emacs and we've got Giggle. But then I could go and start up, for example, you know, Visual Studio Code, which is a Windows application. So now I've got these apps all running side by side. And then if I wanted to, right, check this out. We could come out to Linux. We'll go into my Hanselman folder. We're on the Linux file system here, and I'm going to type code dot 
in Linux. It's installing the VS Code server for x64, and it's going to actually unpack that locally, launch the Windows version of Visual Studio. All right, install the packages that I need for Linux. And you'll notice here in the corner, Visual Studio Code knows that we're talking to Ubuntu, even though we are now running the Windows version of this. I've got full IntelliSense, I can run it. And if I want to, check this out. Inside of Visual Studio Code, I can click on Terminal, LSB, release-a. I'm in Visual Studio Code on Windows 11, and then I can run my Linux terminal here. You get the best of both worlds. You might say, why? Why not just run Linux? I like running Windows. Runs all my games. I like the UI. I like the uh, file explorer. I enjoy the terminal. I have a lot of fun with it. But, uh, and what this allows me to do is have the best of all worlds. I can move seamlessly between all of these applications. I can run my website, .NET Run. We're going to go and start up on localhost, localhost 5000. I can now hover over that. Notice how that's underlined. I can actually click on that, which fires up my website locally. Isn't that cool? It's a really, really, really interesting time right now to be a developer, particularly in the Windows space, because you can do anything you want. You can run Docker, you can run Linux, you get this wonderful terminal. Again, I can go full screen. We also have the ability to do, of course, virtual desktops, which is great. All of these things work seamlessly. And if you want to read more about WSLG, go and search for w WSLG Architecture. And there's a great article here by Steve, who is on the team. And he talks about the philosophy of it, how Wayland and Weston and RDP Rail works. But what you want to look at specifically is this. This is this great diagram that explains the relationship between your applications that run within your user distribution, your Debian, your Ubuntu, whatever, and the separate Windows maintained distro that handles everything. Here's the crazy part, okay? Even sound works. Think about that. Sound on Linux works on Windows. Let's see that work. That'll be our, that'll be our finale, don't you think? Sound works. Let's go and jump to our home directory. We'll run MPV, which is a uh, movie player on Linux, and we'll go and run it on a video for you. Look at that. Sound works on Windows, on Linux. It's scandalous. What a lovely thing that is. And I ran it from the command line. Last thing I want to point out, if I go and start up the uh, Explorer, the Windows Explorer, um, we can actually go to down here. Linux appears in the Windows Explorer, in the Windows Explorer. If I click on that, it will actually show the files so I can access all of my files directly from Windows Explorer. And that video that I just played is sitting right there. So again, moving seamlessly between Windows and Linux. It works great. I would encourage you to check it out. Go get Windows 11. Type WSL dash dash install. Go install Visual Studio Code. You're going to have a blast. And uh, I'll, again, I'll go and do a uh, how to set up your terminal video soon as well. Thanks, y'all.